hello, this is Nick Lycon from ANA Machinery. In this tutorial, we will learn about the Versalift 2535. We will cover the basic controls and operations, how we read the load charts, installing and removing the forks, installing and removing the boom, vertical functions of the boom, and horizontal functions of the boom. This tutorial does not replace any training or certifications required to operate an industrial lift truck provided by your employer. We are here with the Versalift 2535. We will review the controls, operating levers, and the location of the operating manual and load charts. You will find the controls under the waterproof cover. The parking brake identified as the red button is located at the top left of the controls. The brake is applied when the button is pushed in and released when the button is pulled out. The parking brake is the only brake on the Versalift. Everything else is done through direct drive hydraulic system. This knob is the travel speed control, which can be set high or low. This button is for extending and retracting the counterweight. Another button here is for the lights that are located on the mast. This is the digital readout for the scale. We will review more about this scale later in the tutorial. On the instrument panel, we have the warning lights, oil pressure gauge, temperature gauge, tachometer, and charging indicator. The start key and the throttle knob are in the bottom left corner. Please note that the Versalift has a throttle switch and not a throttle pedal. The single pedal on the floor is used to move forward or reverse, and it also controls the travel speed based on how far forward or reverse you depress the pedal. Press your toes to the pedal to travel forward and press down on your heel to travel in reverse. To go in reverse. To start, you must turn on the propane bottle and turn the key in the bottom left corner of the instrument panel. Once started, you can turn the engine throttle with the throttle control. The Versalift operates on LP and some models can run on gasoline or LP. We are connected to an LP bottle and the second LP bottle here is a spare. It is recommended practice to flip the empty bottles upside down when you put them back in the mount. This lets the next person operating the Versalift know that the bottle is empty. As you see, the operator has set the throttle to number one. The scale is currently reading 100 pounds. To reset the scale, press the reset button. You must reset the scale when the forks or boom is lifted from its lowest position. The scale must be reset when changing the forks or boom on the Versalift. The Versalift has a steering wheel like most industrial lift trucks and it is rear wheel controlled. The first lever is used to raise and lower the fork carriage. The second lever is used to tilt the carriage in or out. The third lever is used to extend or retract the boom. The fourth lever is non-operational and for additional attachments not provided. You could find the operator manual and load charts in the compartment above the operator's right shoulder. The Versalift 2535 comes with three counterweights or slabs that are located on the back. The Versalift can also be operated with a remote control and the switch is located on the dashboard. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will use the manual control. The load chart shows the lifting capacity with different configurations. In order to know the lifting capacity of a given configuration, we need to know two measurements. The first measurement is the counterweight extension, and it can be configured at a 0, 12, 24, and 36 inches. The best way to determine the counterweight extension is by measuring. Never extend or retract the counterweight while loaded as it changes the tipping point and the counterbalance. You could risk losing the load if you attempt to extend or retract the counterweight while loaded. 
The next measurement is the load center from the face of the forks or boom, and it requires measuring. If you have a load that has a center of gravity that is positioned 24 inches from the face of the forks or boom, you will use 24 inch load center. Next, find the appropriate load chart determined by the number of counterweight slabs and the forks or boom configuration. We have three charts per page for each counterweight configuration. Use the top chart if you are using forks. Use the center chart if you are using the boom. And use the bottom chart if the job requires you to use both the forks and the boom. Now we will demonstrate how to remove the forks. Ensure that you are on a flat surface and the forks are centered on the fork pins. Use the fork positioning bar to adjust the forks. Retrieve the removal wrench for pulling the pins. Start by removing the top bolt of the keeper plate and rotate the keeper plate to reveal the fork pin. The removal wrench has a threaded end which we will use to pull the pin. Signal the operator to adjust the fork carriage until the fork pin is loose enough to pull out. Warning: Do not pull the fork pin beyond the side of the carriage. Once the fork is disengaged, the operator will lift the mast. Then place the fork pin on top of the pin guides located on the top of the forks. Signal your operator until you are positioned to reinstall the fork pin. Once the fork pin is reinstalled, rotate the keeper plate back to its original position, reinstall the keeper bolt locking the fork pin in its place. Now we will repeat the same process for the fork on the other side. Let us review how to install the forks. Retrieve the removal wrench for pulling the pins. Start by removing the top bolt on the keeper plate and rotate the keeper plate to reveal the fork pin. Install the removal wrench in the end of the fork pin. Signal for the operator to position the fork carriage as needed. It is ideal to have a little pressure inward so the fork pin slides smoothly when it is aligned with the fork and the inner carriage support. Rotate the keeper plate back to its original position. Reinstall the keeper bolt which will lock the fork pin in its place. Once the keeper plate is back in position, move to the other side and repeat the process. Let's review the boom installation. The interlock must be slid all the way out to install the boom. We will discuss the interlock later in this tutorial. There is a connection point on the back of the boom and at the top of the carriage. This is the primary alignment area to use to install the boom. The next step is to align the lugs on the bottom of the carriage of the boom. The operator should visually line up the boom between the mast on the top as the operator is approaching the boom. Once the operator comes in far enough, signal the operator to come up and you will see the connection point being engaged. Once the boom starts lifting, tilt back and hold there. Install the boom lower pin before lifting the boom from the boom stand. Warning: The lower boom pin must be in place anytime the boom is being used. Once the lower boom pin is in place, go around and insert the safety pin and then lift the boom. Make sure the boom is fully engaged in the connection point and pins. Once you come off the receiver on the boom stand, you can back up. Now is a good time to review the interlock. When you are mounting, the interlock must be slid out. When you connect the hydraulics, the interlock must be slid in. This is a safety mechanism. The interlock will not allow you to back away from the boom with the hydraulic hoses connected. The next step is to connect the hydraulic hoses to the boom. Whenever you are connecting or disconnecting the hydraulics from the boom, you must turn the Versa lift off and exercise the levers to relieve any pressure in the hydraulic system. 
These hydraulic valves are turned off. You must turn them on to operate the boom. Now we will remove the boom. Line up with the receivers located on the near end of the boom stand. Never remove the lower pin until you are fully engaged in the receivers close to the ground. Warning, a catastrophic accident could occur if you remove the lower boom pin before the boom is fully engaged in the receiver on the bottom of the stand. If you are misaligned with the receiver, the boom could fall off the carriage. Always keep the lower boom pin in place. The next step is to disconnect the hydraulics. The operator will turn the VersaLift off and exercise the levers to relieve the hydraulic pressure. Turn the valves off and disconnect the hydraulic hoses. Slide the interlock pin open, lower the carriage, and back away from the boom. Now we will look at how to extend and retract the manual horizontal boom section. There is a built-in step to get you into the location to extend and retract the boom. Remove the horizontal boom pin after removing the safety pin. Then you can manually crank the boom in or out. As you are moving the boom in or out, you must line up the hole and put the horizontal boom pin back in place. Always have the safety pin in place when you are using the boom. If the handle is in your way, it's removable. Always extend the boom out the full distance when you want to put the boom in the stand. We are ready to see the secondary manual horizontal extension on the boom. You will need a wrench and a ladder. Let's disconnect the next section of the boom. There is a pin, a bolt, a keeper plate on the side. This section of the boom is difficult to extend manually. It is better to use a forklift to pull the boom out. Remove the horizontal pins, pull the boom out, and reinsert the pins at the desired location. You cannot lift unless both pins are in place. Let's review how to install the extra lifting link that is stored on the boom stand. First, remove the shackle from the end of the boom and install the lifting link over the end of the boom. Reinstall the horizontal pins on the lifting link through the horizontal boom section. Let's review the vertical extension and retraction of the boom. The hydraulic hose is connected. We can extend the boom hydraulically through the first vertical section by using the third lever on the dashboard. To extend the manual section of the boom, you need the fork positioning bar and a block of wood. It is important to have a flashlight so you can see the connection point for the fork positioning bar. This bar has a keeper pin on it which has a special shape to it. Raise the carriage and insert the bar into the manual section of the boom. Twist the bar 90 degrees so it locks in place. Make sure it's not tilted out or back. As the operator is lowering the carriage, the bar is going to touch the block of wood and the manual section is going to stay in place. There are two positions to install the rectangular bar that is stored on the side of the mast. Install the rectangular bar at the desired height of the manual section. Proceed to raise the carriage and remove the fork positioning bar. The manual boom section is now at a fixed height. You can raise and lower the load with the carriage or with the hydraulic vertical section of the boom. Let's review how to retract the manual vertical section of the boom. Raise the carriage to insert the fork positioning bar. It is more difficult to put the positioning bar in place when the boom is already extended because the connecting point is located high up on the manual section of the boom. This is where the flashlight will come in handy. You must make sure that the boom is plumb and the bar is plumb. Proceed to lower the carriage with the fork positioning bar in place on the block of wood. Remove the rectangular bar and replace it into its storage location on the side of the mast. Raise the carriage and release the pressure on the fork positioning bar. Remove the positioning bar and lower the carriage. Remember, you cannot adjust the manual section 
of the boom under load. So I want to talk a little bit about floor loading on the VersaLift. VersaLift is 35,000 pound capacity in a very compact frame. The weight of the VersaLift is about 30,000 pounds. Uh, you can pick 35,000 pounds with it. When you're fully extended, you're picking full load. 90% of your load is on this front axle on these front two wheels. So if you have the weight of the machine, which is 30,000 pounds, the weight of the load is 35, that's 65,000 pounds. And if you have 90% of that, you've got probably 55, 56,000 pounds on that front axle. Um, so you have to be very concerned about what type of floor are you on? Is it a, a good concrete floor? Is it an asphalt parking lot? Um, as you move up in the 4060 and the 6080, it's much more critical because the weight loads get so much heavier. But you may determine that you need to put plates down on the concrete floor or plates down on the asphalt, uh, particularly on a hot summer day on the asphalt outside. So you always want to be concerned about your floor and what your floor condition is. If you have a piece on the boom and you're 24 feet in the air and one tire punches into the concrete and you drop four or five inches, that could be catastrophic. So you always want to be concerned about your floor loading.